And welcome to Hannity on this busy breaking news Friday night. Joe Biden wrapping up yet another disastrous week of his imploding presidency filled with more bizarre blunders, more failed policy, and yes, more really horrific economic data. We're going to break it all down tonight. Now, earlier today, Joey was seen fist pumping with the Saudi crown prince. You know, the same prince that he called the murderer of Jamal Khashoggi, uh, the same nation that he called a pariah nation. Biden claimed in his remarks tonight that he did bring up the issue of Khashoggi. I'm sure he was really firm. He also confirmed that, yes, he did beg for more oil, but uh, details were few and far between. Take a look. We had a good d d discussion on ensuring global energy security and adequate oil supplies to support global economic growth. And that will begin shortly. I'm, and, uh, and I'm doing all I can to increase the supply for the United States of America, which I expect to happen. The Saudis share that urgency. And based on our discussions today, I expect we'll see further steps in the coming weeks. You're coming under a lot of fire for your fist bump with the crown prince. Why? <laughs> I just wanted to give you a chance to respond to that. But also, how can you be sure that another incident, another murder like Jamal Khashoggi's won't happen again? God love you. What a silly question. How could I possibly be sure of any of that? I just made it clear. If anything occurs like that again, they'll get that response and much more. Oh, silly question. You know what the sad thing is? We don't need Saudi Arabian oil. We've got plenty here, gas, oil, coal. We don't need it. But yet again today, Biden showing nothing but weakness on the world stage and suffered, yes, another batch of blunders. I'm sure this shocks you. Take a look. Was making a speech and uh, I had a terrible headache. <laughs> Excuse me, a terrible headache. And uh, sorry, this <coughs> all wrong. Thank you. Didn't the media mob attack Marco Rubio for taking a sip of water? Well, there's one, one saving grace. He didn't shake air again like he did the day before. It only got worse from there because Biden also made a bizarre comparison while speaking in Jerusalem by linking the plight of Irish Catholics under British rule to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. What? Take a look. No, no, no expression. Hope springs eternal. I, uh, my background and the background of my family is Irish American. And uh, we uh, have a, uh, a long history of uh, not fundamentally unlike the Palestinian people with uh, Great Britain and their attitude toward Irish Catholics over the years for 400 years. And get this, Biden's trip is going so poorly that it's even drawing the ire of the congenital, compromised, corrupt liar that is Adam Schiff. He tweeted about Biden's Saudi Arabia visit, said, quote, if we ever needed a visual reminder of the continuing grip oil-rich autocrats have on U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East, well, we got it today. One fist pump is worth a thousand words if ever there was a sign, a more obvious sign that Democrats were ready to move on from Biden. This is it. It couldn't be uh, more clear. Maybe the congenital liar should join us and support American energy independence. You know, the Trump policies. Now, it caps off yet another rough week for Team Biden as the president's blunders abroad. That was just the latest in a long string of struggles, revealing once again Biden is weak, he is frail, he is decrepit, he is not up to the job. This country should be seriously considering the 25th Amendment. Take a look. Every time I hear hail to the chief wonder, where the hell is he? <laughs> Took me a long while. <laughs> you think I'm joking? I'm not. Turn around and where, where's, where's the president? Mr. President, what's your message to Democrats who don't want you to run again? They want me to run. Two-thirds say they Read don't. Read the polls. Read the polls, Jack. You guys are all the same. And continue, which we must do every, every day, continue to bear witness. 
to keep alive the truth and honor of the Holocaust, horror of the Holocaust. Thank you, President Herzog and President Biden. Yeah, look at the polls, Jack. Oh, nobody's there. Just another reason why more and more Democrats, they are looking for someone other than Biden, with over 60 percent not wanting Biden to run in 2024. This week, Biden inflation hit yet the highest number ever, another 40-plus year high at 9.1 percent. And even worse, a new record, near new record, wholesale inflation, that spiked to a whopping 11.3 percent. When it gets to retail on that level, you'll pay for all of it. And like I've been saying, everything you buy at every store you go to is costing you more. It's why food bank lines are now longer than ever, with Americans now overwhelmed by surging prices at the grocery store. Look at these findings from the Associated Press, hardly part of the vast right-wing conspiracy. For example, Phoenix, they have a food bank, their main distribution center. They gave out food packages to over 4,200 families during the third week in June. That is a 78% increase from the same week last year. Alameda, California, in that county there is also seeing a big increase, as is Houston, Los Angeles, and so many others. And Biden's and his far-left enablers, they've been lying and lying and lying about inflation one time after another. Take a look. I really doubt that we're going to see an inflationary cycle. Most economic analysts have believed that it will have a temporary or transitory impact. The faster than expected increase in some of those prices is actually a good sign. The overwhelming consensus is going to pop up a little bit and then go back down. It's highly unlikely that it's going to be long-term inflation that's going to get out of hand. I don't know anybody who's worried about inflation. Over the last couple of months, uh, we actually saw it trended downward. Make no mistake. Inflation is largely the fall of Putin. I'm going to do everything I can to minimize Putin's price hike here at home. If you want to get rid of inflation, the only way to do it is to um, re undo a lot of the Trump tax cuts. Now, these surging costs, they all stem from Joe Biden's failed economic and energy policies. Of course, artificially reducing the supply of the lifeblood of the world's economy, that's energy, while attacking U.S. oil and gas and the industry altogether and letting the far-left climate religious cult agenda run the country. Only under far-left logic is it okay to beg foreign governments for more oil while not wanting to drill domestically right here at home. It's not just a Joe Biden problem either, with the exception of maybe Joe Manchin. This is the new Green Deal Socialist Democratic Party. And any other Democrat, if they were in power, they would be making the same dumb, idiotic decisions. How is it okay to get oil from Russia, Iran, uh, OPEC, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela, but we don't produce it domestically? Tell me the logic behind that. Now, the people around him are no better, and frankly, they're the worst kind of enablers. Vice President Harris, she is totally unprepared to be president, as we've now learned yet again today. Another staffer is leaving as she makes one word salad after another. She's almost as bad as Biden, but for a little bit different reasons. Take a look. Together, we are expanding access to transportation. Seems like maybe it's a small issue. It's a big issue. You need to get to go and need to be able to get where you need to go to do the work and get home. Even the first lady, Jill Biden, well, she's not doing her husband any favors because as Democrats continue to lose more and more support among Hispanic voters, well, Jill Biden decided it was a good idea to compare Hispanic Americans to tacos. Take a look. Raul helped build this organization with the understanding that the diversity of this community, as distinct as the Bogodas of the Bronx, as beautiful as the blossoms of Miami, and as unique as the breakfast tacos here in San Antonio.